The music was Glenn Miller, the time World War II, as the Allies prepared to strike back at the German occupation of France and avoid a repeat of the disastrous earlier invasion attempt at Dieppe. Pensacola's Al McCracken remembers those days 50 years ago. He's one of the lucky ones who lived to tell about a prelude to D-Day called Exercise Tiger. We knew that uh, ships were being sunk, and uh, you, of course, never knew when you were going to be possibly the next one. McCracken was an 18-year-old engineman aboard an LST, a landing ship for tanks, during a rehearsal for D-Day when nine German boats attacked. As far as uh, a fear of uh, being lost at sea, I don't think any of us, except maybe the older fellows on the ship, which we only had a few of, may have uh, felt a little bit more. But the younger fellows uh, didn't, seem to, uh, didn't seem to bother them. As these articles explain, 749 Americans were lost at sea when the exercise off the English coast quickly became a disaster. American ships didn't hear British radio warnings about the German boats. Many American soldiers didn't know how to inflate their life vests. Many were found drowned, floating feet up. They didn't stand a chance. Exercise Tiger was such a nightmare of negligence and poor planning that the Allied commanders ordered the whole thing hushed up. Still, McCracken feels, despite all the problems, some good came from it. Basically, some of the lessons we learned from that Exercise Tiger were put to good use for the invasion, and I'm sure we it saved a lot of lives during the uh, invasion. Says Lieutenant Harold Bacon, son of Mr. and Mrs. Noel Bacon, of Lexington, arrived home last week from England. Harold Bacon made headlines in his hometown paper 50 years ago, and his mother was so proud she saved the clipping. Bacon, who now lives in Gulfport, was a 23-year-old gunnery officer on the destroyer Glennon, until the Germans sank it on D-Day. A PT boat rescued him. Fairhope's James Clay has his memories too. He was 28 on D-Day and a first class engineman aboard PC-484 off Utah Beach. He has a German belt buckle to remember D-Day. In Mobile, James Redford has a few more Nazi souvenirs of his time as a young private first class. One of the combat engineers brought ashore in the second wave of soldiers to hit Utah Beach. He still has the copy of the Mobile Register his mother saved for him. The headline says it all. Each man had a different role to play on D-Day. Their stories comprise a mosaic of what happened on June 6, 1944. I just came down from the bridge and sitting at the wardroom table about to take a mouthful of egg. <laughs> it wham. We hit a mine and it blew... Uh, Oh, about a third of the ship off. It had just sunk down to the bottom. Those C 47s just filled the sky, and they were only about masthead height. And, they were, and each one of them was, was towing one and two gliders, you know. It was just waves and waves for a mile long. And a mosquito couldn't have flew through it. It was in these little, <laughs> what they call Higgins boats, it's just little small. Assault boats. They went in and half of them were sick, didn't know where they were or anything else when they hit the beach. But I think most of them <laughs> got real well after they hit that beach and the shells started falling. One thing you're always scared of going into action, at least I was, and I think a lot of people is, you're scared of how you're going to react yourself, whether you're going to panic or whether you're going to let your shipmates down or something, you know. Well, we was all kids then, I think. All the way, there was 40 men on that thing that I was on. And I think, I don't think there's one of them 30 years old. So we was reckless. And <laughs> I guess my biggest fear of driving that truck with all that TNT and stuff and mines and things on it, because you got hit, you know, you're not going to be there long. Oh, they're bad memories, too, you know. When you think of the carnage and the death and that sort of thing. Really sickening part that I did was when we were picking up the bodies, floating. And you leave a body in the salt water for a while. Brother, you got something on your hand. 
As the Allies swept inland, James Redford saw a good friend from Scottsboro, Alabama, run over a mine with his truck. He tried to help. I run down to him, and he was in the truck, and so he always called me Red. He said, Red, my leg blowed off. So I told him, I said, no, Harvey, you all right. But it blowed his leg right up through the steering wheel, and I took his leg out and got him out of the truck. And then the medics come running down there then, and I kind of shielded him from it. And he, he, about two days later, he died. We had no idea of losing the thing. We was going to win. We, we wasn't going to lose the war. We, uh, that didn't even enter our mind. If they hadn't got rid of Hitler, there's no telling what would happen. High cliffs, a rocky beach, and rough seas. The Normandy coastline has a rugged beauty today. Fifty years ago, it was just rugged. 250,000 Allied troops, half of them American, stormed a 50-mile stretch of coastline during D-Day. During fierce fighting, more than 2,000 died in that one day. But now, 50 years later, what do you know about their sacrifice? Just this week, President Clinton said, we don't know enough. Today, too many of our youngest Americans know too little about what the heroes of that war did. The children and grandchildren of that generation have not been taught enough about the meaning of Normandy or Anzio or Guadalcanal or Midway. Most of the Gulf Coast veterans to whom I introduced you this week agree that what happened 50 years ago is gone and to the younger generation, forgotten. Some of these kids don't even know what it means now. They don't even, uh, they could care less. It had, had to have been there to see it. Now, when you talk to people about the Normandy invasion, most of the younger people, uh, they've read about it in the history books, but it's uh, not very significant now uh, because I don't think too many of the uh, schools teach thing about patriotism as it should be taught as we knew it back 50 years ago.